you doing? Welcome, dude. Isaac Hernandez. What's up, dudes? How you doing? We are here. I'm here. In Lee, no, Bradford. Bradford. Um, Martin and I are joined by, we'll do an intro in a minute because we're waiting for people to join in. Hi, Nelson. How you doing? We can kind of see the chat over here and also we've got David Beebe with us. He's moderating, not moderating, but he's... Uh, he's making sure we don't argue. They saw, <laughs> yeah, they saw your face on Instagram, but just your hand. So uh, it's all right. It's fine. Um, Wow, Hello. Alex, how you doing? Hamada, well do, welcome. Um, so if there's any questions on Instagram or any interesting comments, BB will forward yeah. them to us. If you're watching on YouTube, either on my YouTube channel or on the Laney YouTube channel, we'll see your comments come up here. And if you're watching on Twitch as well, anybody who's on Twitch, we can see you guys there as well. Let us know where you're from, guys. Yeah, where you know where this from? is going out to. From Bradford to the world. From Bradford to the world. <laughs> so we, we've, Martin and I, it's not a day off today, but we've been on uh, the UK part of the Ibanez AZ. What is it? Oh, this is the, my, my, the light on my guitar is not so good. Yeah, that's better. There you go. Yeah, with these strip lights above are really bad for glossy finishes. Um, and today we had a live stream booked in, so we thought we'd do this as I said, on my YouTube channel, Lane's YouTube channel, Instagram, and on my Twitch channel as well. So, Matziati is watching on Twitch. Nice Brazil. Dude. El Paso, Texas. Obviously a gamer. Brazil, wow. Italy. Ohio. El Paso is the one where Breaking Bad plays uh, oh. some of the episodes. Yeah, Hong yeah. Kong, Sweden, Hong Kong. Kuwait, but British. Nice, nice wow. to see you guys. Singapore. Sweden on Instagram. Sacramento. Portugal. Portugal. We're coming to Portugal soon. We might Spain. want to mention this. We are. We're coming to Portugal. I don't know what the date is. Yeah, yeah. We can, find we, out. We can, look, it. We can look it up. But keep an eye out. We're coming to Portugal very soon. And also Italy, Spain. We just finished the UK leg. We're going to France tomorrow. Going to France tomorrow at 4 a.m. Uh, and then we're in Japan, and then we are going to Scandinavia. Yes. Finish. Finland, uh, Norway, and Sweden. Sweden. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Do we do Denmark? I think we're going to Denmark. Denmark as well. Yeah. Do we? Yes, I'm pretty sure we do actually. So, we thought we'd do this live stream for you. We're going to take some questions. If you've got any questions, start posting those in the chat. Um, and we'll probably do a little bit of demoing, a little bit of playing for you, and see how we go. Thank you very much, Amir. That's very good. I'm glad the audio is good. How did the guitar sound? <laughs> is the level good? We're just using a little mic at the front, so hopefully it sounds okay. Martin, we've talked about bringing you to Hong Kong, if you remember. Do you? Yeah, I'm not so sure. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not so great at keeping up with emails these days, because I'm, you know, I'm a one-man business, and sometimes it's really hard to keep up. If that is still a thing, just just send me another email or write me on Facebook, and we can. Which camera? This camera. Yeah, you're looking at. Well, you're yeah. wondering. So just just hit me up, and uh, we'll make something happen. Fantastic. Okay, so uh, we are here because of these wonderful guitars and also these amps, which on Instagram you can't see. So we're in the middle of this clinic tour. As Martin said, we're going to France tomorrow. So we thought we'd tell you a little bit about the guitars, uh, a little bit about the amps, the setups that we've got going here. As I say, we'll play you a little bit of music probably as well. Um, get that out of the way, do some demos. Live streams are always weird for this stuff. It's way worse than doing a real clinic in person. Yeah, it's so much easier to just be in front of an audience. It definitely is. Um, than staring into the void. But if you've got any questions on the guitars, if you've got any questions on our playing, if you've got anything you want to ask us, guys, please feel free. I'm going to check Instagram here too. Yeah. Fractal yeah. is everywhere. Actually, the, maybe we, before we do anything, I want to sort of talk about the setup that's going on here because actually it's sort of similar to what we're using for the clinics. Um, we want to talk a little bit about touring and various other things as well. Um, is that any questions? I'm just seeing the most recent comments ever since I joined, so I can't, okay. see, I can't see the old. What about practice re regimes? What about practice regimes? Okay, uh, let's yeah. let's talk a little bit about. We'll talk about the guitars. We'll talk about these setups, and then we'll do we'll field some questions and see how this goes. Um, so, the reason we're here is because of these signature guitars that we've got. And I know a lot of you guys have seen these, but we wanted to talk to you about them in person since that's the reason we're doing these clinic tours. So, these are our signature guitars. This is the TQM one, and that's the MM one. Obviously, beautiful guitars. They're based on the brand new Ibanez AZ. Now I'm saying AZ even though I'm British because that's how the Japanese guys pronounce it, so that's what they're called. Uh, the Ibanez AZ range. And these are our signature, what you might call sort of um, customized signature versions of those guitars, mm -hmm. and they're absolutely stunning. Um, why don't you do a little bit of the story, yeah. just, just to start with, as to how this all came about. And I promise guys we'll do some playing shortly. We want to talk about this first, kind of let you know what these guitars are. I'm seeing Spain dates on the monitor. Yes, we're coming to Spain very soon. Keep an eye out on our Facebook pages. We're only in Barcelona, though, I'm afraid. Oh, that's true. Yeah, only ah, in Barcelona. Okay. But we'll get the date for you in a bit. Yeah. So, um, just 
a quick story about how these guitars came to fruition, fruition if you will. Um, I've been an Ibanez and Dorsey for more than three years now. Actually, I've been an Ibanez and Dorsey for my entire life. I've always loved those guitars, <laughs> but I'm an official in Dorsey for three years now. And when they approached me in 2015, shortly after I got onto the artist roster, I received an email from the guys from Japan saying that they were about to design a new, what they call player's player guitar, like a super high-tech yet vintage in a way type instrument that does it all, the guitar to end all guitars, if you will. A guitar that meets the highest demands for playability, for sound, for aesthetics, versatility, all those kind of things that Tom and I are after, really. So I was lucky enough to be involved into that project from pretty much the very beginning. In November 2015, the guys from the LA and Japan offices, they came to my place and they brought a piece of bodywood and stacks of folders, right? So, and those folders contained all kinds of designs for headstocks, logos, body shapes, finishes, pickup configurations, tremolo options, all that good stuff. And we were basically just going through, through all of them and I was just telling them what I like best about guitars, what I think is important. The goal was to make sort of a desert island guitar. Like players like us, we travel a lot, we can only bring one guitar at a time. So we kind of need a guitar that is extremely reliable is not prone to weather changes and that is versatile. So I was just giving my two cents really saying I had my best experiences with two humbucker guitars, 24 frets, but a lot of guys in that kind of scene, they look for 22 fret guitars and HSS um, pickup layouts. So basically- uh, Thank you for that by the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Screwed. <laughs> so whether, <laughs> now I gotta clarify, so it's not like I made the demands and Ivan has turned that into a guitar. They did this with a couple of guys around the world. And whether that was my input or somebody else's input or everybody else, everybody was consenting on this. It was already, like when I received the first prototype in late, two, no, early 2016, it was, it was already, yeah, early 2016. The guitar was already pretty much perfect. Um, it was so close to what we have in our hands now and it was everything that I ever dreamed of to be on a guitar. And from there, uh, obviously they offered me a signature deal at some point and from there it was just very few decisions to be made to the specs. Like I'm just gonna show you this briefly. This guitar is a mahogany body guitar with a flame maple top. This is the only AZ guitar in the entire range that has a mahogany body. So if you love the mahogany sound like I do, because all my favorite guitars of the past 10 years that stuck with me for several years exclusively, they've all been mahogany guitars. This is the one to go. Other than that, the spec is identical to the AZ with the dual humbucker. And yeah, other than that, it's just a couple of aesthetics. Like the, the color is a bit different, the chrome hardware is a bit different, the abalone inlays are a nice little little visual texture. So yeah, other than that, it's pretty much the gist of it. I'm just going to go over, over some of the spec. Uh, we would we want to go through the spec. Feel free. I mean, on your guitar, there's yeah. some unique bits and you can go through whatever you want. I'll, I'll tell okay. a little bit about mine as well. Obviously we got, I mean, he'll just do whatever I uh, didn't mention. Um, I'm just going to keep it very brief here. Two humbuckers from Seymour Duncan Hyperion, specially designed to fit this guitar. Um, you call this a blank, what would you call it? A blank canvas. A blank canvas. So it's a pretty much a neutral sounding sounding pickup set that brings out the, the tonal qualities of the wood of your guitar as well as lets you be very versatile with your amps and effects because basically whatever you put th the guitar through, it's gonna sound like that. Um, other than that, we got a baked maple neck. Tom's gonna tell you more about that procedure in a minute. I don't know so much about it to be honest. We got locking tuners, stainless steel frets, a go-to tremolo with Titan saddles. Um, Everybody knows the 510, the best tremolo that GoTo ever made. This has taken the 510 one step further because it has the titanium, the titanium saddles for better tuning, tuning stability, more sustain. The string spacing is ever so slightly closer, so that makes uh, modern playing techniques a little bit easier. And I, I don't know what else is there. That's well, really I guess stuff. I guess I should tell you how I got involved with this because people always ask me. By the way, if you're on Instagram and we're looking over here, it's because we've got two cameras. And it's more convenient to look at this one than, than the phone. So apologies on Instagram for not staring straight into your eyeballs. Um, so I got involved with this process. There was um, a NAMM show 2016, it must have been. Mm. 2016. And Martin and I were playing on the Laney booth. And 
the guys from Ibanez for a few years before had been asking me if I was ever interested in an artist deal, certainly not a signature deal, I would never, ever, ever in a million years have expected that. And I'd always very politely said, oh, thanks guys, that's in incredible, but you know, I'm kind of happy where I am at this point in my career. Um, and I got whisked away into a very small room on the Ibanez booth, like a broom cupboard sized room, tiny room, and was given a neck from one of these guitars and was utterly, utterly blown away by it because it was basically everything I expected in a guitar that was sort of $5,000, you know, just insane. You've got satin finish on here, really nice neck profile. It's not like you'd expect with a wizard neck. I have an RG550 downstairs and I absolutely adore it, but this is a different thing altogether. Um, it's like a vintage style neck, but with modern, the trappings of a modern guitar. So you've got 12 inch radius on there. It's all finished in satin, as I say, and the baked maple essentially gives you um, what it does is they use this thing called S-Tech, so it's a bit different to standard baking. They inject nitrogen into the atmosphere um, that they bake the wood into, and it, it essentially changes the molecular structure of the wood and removes the vast majority of the moisture. So what that means is if you travel from climate to climate, or if you go from summer to winter, you, need, you don't need to do anything to the neck, it just doesn't move, basically. You guys have probably all seen baked maple before. So this is like uber baked maple, if you like. It's super cool. Baked baked maple. Baked baked maple, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's like the, um, what's his name? Gordon Ramsay baked maple. Um, except it isn't yellow, you? Except it isn't yellow. And it goes this really nice color as well, which is super cool. Now, the guitar's quite different because Ibanez have got this big stock of wood. Like this one's got bird's eye in the fretboard. It's gonna be hard to show you on camera. You can check some pictures of this guitar out on my Instagram page, actually, that the guys from mine or Ibanez Germany took. Um, as Martin mentioned, stainless steel frets, obviously the prestige fret treatment you'd expect on a Japanese Ibanez. Uh, the tuners are Goto Haplock or Mag, uh, Mag Haplock tuners. That, that basically means that you can change the um, height of the posts because the headstock's not recessed backwards. So you can change the height of the post to get the right tension behind the nut. You've got an oil impregnated bone nut on there, so you don't need lubricant in there, which is super cool. Um, our guitars have abalone inlays as well, and they're actually really beautifully executed. Really, really yeah. nice, really, really nice. Doesn't come in the AZs, right? No, those will have black dots on them. Um, you've got luminous top dots on here, so glow in the dark top dots. Uh, we could turn all the lights out here, but you would only see the top dots. And we're so beautiful, you probably wouldn't see us. Uh, and our teeth. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> So this guitar, the TQM1, Martin's got a flame maple top, which is absolutely beautiful. And again, yes. what's really cool, just like you'd expect with flame maple, there's variations in terms of the oh, yeah. flame. Yours is super, super figured. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very tight figured maple. I've also found that with some of the production models, oh, there's Martina. Hey, baby. Mwah. Hi, Martina. <laughs> I wonder, are you um, watching on my YouTube channel or online? -y? I'm intrigued. Anyway. Some of the production models have a slightly different color to them. It's very interesting. So even this was a, color. a kind of not prototype, but the first. Was it the first or the second the, version model? I'm not sure. I think this is the very first. The very first one. Yeah, I even have pictures of this guitar being assembled in the factory and stuff. So yeah. It's really cool. So some of the, the guitars are a bit more bluish. Some of them tend to be a bit more greenish. Depends yeah. on the type of the piece of wood they use. Same with the necks, by the way. Some of these yeah, exactly. necks are like your roasted necks. It starts significantly it. darker than mine. Depends on how long they have to roast the individual. And what colour the piece of maple was in the oh, yeah, instance yeah. as well, if it's a darker piece of maple. Um, and as I say, you know, some of the some of the necks are quite highly figured. You'll find I've seen some premiums, some of the Indonesian ones that have got flame maple in the necks, but of course because they're roasted, it has no effect on the stability of the wood. Um, this wood is called monkey pod. You'll find it actually um, as a veneer on some of the um, the old exotic acoustics that Ibanez used to make. Now this is obviously not a veneer, it's a big thick top. Uh, it's a really, really nice tone wood. It's kind of similar to Carina or Kara, I guess, in terms of its looks. Um, they're really, really different in terms of how they look. The figuring can be very intense, like this guitar. Um, can you do me a favor? Could you grab my other guitar? I'm sure, that'd be right, send that feedback. Uh, we'll send Beebs off to uh, his art. just checking Instagram here. Uh, so the, the other one I have is really, um, they're very unique. It's got, this almost looks like somebody's taken a pen and kind of stippled on it or something. It's very cool, but it's very highly figured. Then you've got an older body, so nice cutaways and contours on here. Everything you want from a super strap, basically. Really good upper fret, thank you very much. So you can see the difference in these. Hopefully you can see that. I don't know how well that's gonna show up because of the lighting. Um, for Instagram, let me come a little bit closer. So there's one, and there's the other. And you guys, it's gonna be slightly out of focus, but oh no, it's not too bad, actually. There's one, highly figured. And then the other one, if I get, I don't know how well you can see this, but. It's very, very shiny in here, so that's the difference. 
They're very cool. Um, just invade the chat here. Are you chatting with people? Yeah. So, um, the other things that are really cool, Martin mentioned about the titanium saddles. Um, we've got standard five-way switch on here. Obviously, I've got Humbucker Single Single. So, you've got all your classic, I really like if I turn the dual fusion on. So, I'm running through Eleni Lionheart, which you can't see on Instagram, it's just off screen. The guys on the YouTube channel can see this. Um, so, with the uh, dual fusion, I've not got a lot of gain here. <laughs> And then I turn the dual fusion off. Obviously, you guys usually, I guess most of you guys will know how a five way switch works on Humbucker Single Single. I always find it more confusing on a, I don't know if you know how it works, but we'll, we'll figure it out on a dual humbucker. But here we've got a bridge, bridge humbucker, then you've got these two together, then you've got the middle single coil on its own, then you've got these two together but wired in like a, a kind of parallel way, so you get that position four strat sound. And then you've got the neck single coil on its own. So I'll just run through those super quick, just with some simple stuff. <laughs> single coil. Very nice. Nice and warm. But if I flip the switch up, I get these two wide in series. So now, very nice kind of, um, like a, almost like an arch top jazz sound. But it gives you an idea, the versatility of these guitars is just fairly insane, and that's what we wanted, I mean, you mentioned it earlier. So it's very, very, very versatile instrument. So those are the specs. Is there anything else I've missed? I don't think so. Uh -huh. yeah. There's always the Aries website. You can check all that stuff. Yeah, there's, we, we all have tons, of, both of us have tons of videos on these guitars. You, if you want to see them in action, you know, in a real way, um, go to my YouTube channel and check out the performances we recorded together with them. There's one that's there's a Yannick Costello tune it's called Mana. That's a good one to check out. Has a ton of different clean tones in it. Has lots of distorted shred in it. Yeah, it's we we did we did isn't she lovely on the yeah we did falling how sensitive how insensitive is a good one to check out yeah. in terms of the jazz tones. Actually, it's really interesting if you listen to Mana. We're both playing with some big, wide, fat kind of um, ambient clean tones, some some slightly more percussive stuff, but also some full on shred. Lead tones, and then compare that to how insensitive yeah. or isn't she lovely. It's like you would normally need two different guitars to do those kind of things, or even two different guitars. So that's kind of cool. Um, I'll tell you really briefly about the amp that I'm using as well. You can't see it on Instagram, unfortunately. Um, so this is the Laney Lionheart. I don't want to make this into a big advert, but but I want to. You know, this, this is the reason we're here, so I want to tell you about this stuff. So we've got the Laney Lionheart one by twelve combo here. I also have a two by twelve combo at home. It's a Class A, you know, single ended clean amp basically. That I, there is a drive channel now, I just never use it because the clean channel is so good. It's like a Fender-y, shiny, clean thing um, that's basically like boutique quality for non-boutique prices. Now, unfortunately, my Line 6 HX effects is sat over there because on this tour, we'll talk about this a little bit, but one of the hazards of touring is that you lose stuff constantly and I lost the power supply for it. So at the moment, not that this is a downgrade, it's, it's, it's amazing. I'm using my AX8 
to do all the effects, so the delays, the reverb, it's all coming from the AXA. And then I've got the dual fusion in the front and channel one through the clean channel on the amp. Gives me that vibe. Otherwise, we'll get kicked out by Bradford City Council. I mean, I yeah. So, um, yeah, what, what are you using? Uh, I'm using the Laney Ironheart, the 30 watt combo version. Um, but it's uh, it's ba it's basically serves me in this this scenario serves me as a power amp in a cabinet. Um, all the preamp sounds are and the effects are coming from the Atomic amplifier, which was graciously provided by Atomic for me. And they make just such a good combo. It's like the lightest setup I've ever had. And it's, yeah, I use one effect and that's a delay. That's all I ever need and the rest is just, I need really good preamp sounds for this. So I have a volume pedal here to, to, to we, we play some duo stuff, maybe we're gonna play something or maybe not. Um, so I always try to match myself perfectly to, to your volume basically. So it becomes a nice blend, especially yeah, since we play an end blade as well, I'll see if I yeah. remember. Cool. So um, yeah, so this is this amp has so much headroom. It's amazing. Always stays clean. The bottom end is always tight, no matter what you do. I can just show you some of my favorite sounds here. So the first one is a bit of a, a brighter, clean sound, and I usually will use the, the what's that? The second position. I always forget which way to count yeah. from. It's the second position. So. which kicks in really nicely. So if, you, if I'm on this position two, you go to the middle pickup and engage this, the neighbors will start complaining. So it's basically that very same sound. channels and the clean sounds are ridiculous it's they could have easily given this a more neutral name than iron heart and given it a more neutral look and that's such a metal look and sell it for three times the price and people would buy it we, absolutely we, certain we've done duo gigs where i've used that as the, the clean amp the exclusively the entire and let's just say you, you preferred it over a boutique amp that a guy like john mayer would use yes oh yes yes that's that right. is I remember now. top 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 end I wasn't into that amp actually. Yeah. <laughs> and like my second clean tone would be me going to the bridge pickup, sorry, neck pickup, rolling down the tone, taking off the slight hair that I had in the preamp, and it gives me. Which I switch picks when I when I go for different tones, at least nowadays. I've been using the Jazz 3 picks for my entire life uh, and recently made a switch to the Dunlop Altex 0.73 Sharps, which are my favorite pick in the world right now. However, they do sound a bit harsh and a bit clicky for Jazz tones. So whenever I use those darker Jazz sounds, I still go back to the Jazz pick. 
it's also easy to remember to use a jazz pick for jazz. So for a simple guy like me, it keeps things grounded. And then I have my, my distortion sound, which is really more gain than anybody would ever need to do. So I roll down the volume all the way and bring it up just a little and then I start playing with my fingers and I get this sound. Yeah. And if I use the pick and I crank the, the sound all the way up, I get... Instagram questions. Um, what kind of things, as part of the clinics, topics do you cover? Do you use it? That's good. So um, we cover things? a few things. We we do have some set stuff that we cover. So Martin recently has been covering phrasing a lot. Mm -hmm. um, might be quite interesting to talk about that a little bit actually. Let's just give him a hint because people are still have to have a reason to come on. Well, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but we'll just just, just, just do a hint taste of these things. And I, I usually talk about my legato technique. Um, and we also cover a lot of stuff to do with fretboard visualization, but in terms of we give an example, a particular example of how we utilize it um, to solo at the same time but create. It's almost like a, a poor man's bar. We can you know, try that. We can try it. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, we can try it. <laughs> we can try it. We'll try it. Fine. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, and then what else do we talk about? We, no, nothing. We play a lot actually because. We would try to do more playing this time around. Unlike a lot of clinics where you'll hear guys sort of telling, this is cool as well, obviously, telling gig stories or like playing tunes, we do a huge amount of playing as well in our clinics. We do and the duo thing. We need to point out that um, that most of what we do is playing together, not to backing tracks. So when you come to one of our shows, you get the full musical experience because we're not taking something that is supposed to be played with a bigger group of musicians and Doing, the doing it the karaoke way, but we're actually playing as a duo, so it's a non-compromised yeah. musical experience in that sense. We do a bit of, of the backing track stuff, but 90% of what we're playing is together and creating something on the spot with each other, which is kind of cool. And then there's a bit of an ed educational side to it. Exactly. Working. So you're getting quite a few different facets when you come to the clinics, you know, that you don't normally get from a standard guitar clinic, which is kind of cool. That's what we wanted to achieve. Um, so maybe if we answer a couple more questions and then we will maybe play something. A few people have asked about rolled edges on the fretboard. Are they, are they rolled fretboard edges? They're not rolled like you'll find in an old strap that's been rolled. Okay. But they're, they're not like a cliff edge either. Uh, um, the fret edges are all rolled though. Uh, actually, a question from someone that came to the, the, what, the clinic last night. Yeah, oh, nice. Carl, Carl Davis. And, but he says, oh, thanks for coming, Carl. I forgot last night to ask any tips Assuming this is aimed at Martin. I know what this is about. <laughs> Any tips for ultimate picking? I struggle with cross picking, so. Go to this man. Can you specify a little bit what the problem is? What, what did, he, did, he point, did he give some specifics? No, I don't so. uh, yeah, I just, no, uh, just struggle cross picking. Just struggle cross picking. Cross picking across strings. Well, the, Troy Grady has a new course out. Not a new course, but he has some very interesting 
interesting insight as to develop cross picking. Like his newest method is to like put the guitar on its down like this and start developing your cross picking really? like this. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's very interesting. This might worth, be worth giving a shot. For me, it was always it was always dictated by the music. I was lucky enough to to get into Steve Morse and that kind of stuff at a very young age. So the cross picking, I never, never even, I've never even given it a thought. The thing is, what you can do if you have troubles. What you can do is just practice through the pain and hope hope that it'll get better someday. You need to really you don't mean physical pain, though, do you? No, 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 not physical pain. Fair so point I need to point that out. Yeah, um, I mean, you, you cannot just go with your head through the wall. You need to find out what the actual problem is and then how you solve it. Cross picking is very interesting, in particular. It's just it would just be interesting to study the way the pick travels across the strings with people who can cross pick well. The difference is to pick slanting, if you have pick slanting, you say you have a downward pick slant, those longer lines that's what's happening all the time it basically gives me the liberty to at any point cross strings and I don't even need to prepare myself in a specific way to know that I have to be on an upstroke so the, the, the string clears it basically means study study the way the pick travels and make sure it lands above above the, the strings with any stroke that's really the gist of it there you go um, Graal Etaro asks exercises for building longer phrases with triads like Tom does on beast mode. Exercise for building, read it again? I think, yeah, so exercises for building longer phrases with triads like Tom does on beast mode. Um, well, I mean, one thing you can do is figure out different ways to sequence triads. So I'm assuming by triads you mean exclude, I mean, we don't know, but exclusively triads. So, like, I do this a lot. Um, it's not going to make sense visually. Oh no, if I do it here, it will. Um, there's a thing in music that you can do called triad pairs, mm -hmm. and they work really well for this kind of line-based way of playing triads as opposed to quarterly. They work well for quarterly as well. Um, so for instance, if I'm in the key of C, you could take any triad pair, but the triad pair, just literally a pair of triads, um, you normally take the fourth and fifth triads <laughs> in the key. Read that the lowest comment. I know, yeah, C. So see. Um, <laughs> He's <laughs> Steve's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every single you've seen him before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Steve. Um, so I'm trying to ignore that now. Uh, if I've got triads four and five, I'm going to find the lowest position on the guitar on the A, D, and G strings where I can play those triads. So it would be F major and G major. Okay, so how do I make that as opposed to being a chord into a line? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this. I'm going to play the third, then I'm going to play fifth and then I'm going to play the root and then I'm going to play the third again. So I'm playing it as an arpeggio basically. So I've got four notes. And the next thing I have to do is I have to learn how to sequence that pattern through those triads. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to play F and I'm going to slide into the G major triad and do the same thing. And these are second inversion triads. <laughs> So right now I can go into my next F major, which would be a root position, and play the same triad, sort of, uh, not the same triad, sorry, the same pattern with my right hand. Then I'm going to slide up on my G major. Then I'm going to get the next inversion, which would be a, a first inversion. Slide into the G, so we get this. So that kind of a line is quite useful because you can take let me do this with some overdrive on. You can take a, an existing triad that you know is a chord and make it into a line. Which is quite cool. And the nice thing about that is that will work over any of the diatonic chords. It's a very similar. Yeah, I get this, I, all the time I get this idea sometimes. Like, triad pairs, you, you did it with closed voice triad. Yeah. I do it with open triads, which means that basically, instead of having the triads in the exact order, you have, you, you take the root, you skip a note, which means you don't play the third, but instead you play the fifth, and you, instead you put the third on top. And, and you do inversions from that. You can get that kind of thing. So if you wanted to create a C Lydian sound, you would take the two 
two triad pairs from that scale, or the, the, the two triads, the, the two major triads that are in a row from that scale, which would be C major and D major, but you voice them like... So if you're in C Lydian, by the way, you shouldn't normally think this way, but you have to in order to figure out chords four and five. That's why I was hesitating to say yeah. if you have this C Lydian thing, because Lydian is not a key. Yeah, it's kind of a tricky thing to figure out. But basically, you normally would use chord four and five in the key. So I hesitate to say this, but if you're in C Lydian, you would work out that that's G major, and then you'd figure out chords four and five from that key, which would be C and D, which is how we came to C and D major. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, let's take a couple more and then maybe we can play something. Yeah. Maybe one more tune and then play play another. Yeah. Okay. Or we can do the we can do the fugue thingy thing. Yes, we can do that too. I don't mind whatever. <laughs> Thank you. 
This is always a gamble, isn't it? It's always weird on live streams and stuff. But trust me, guys, a live stream is way more nerve wracking than in front of any audience. Jesus Christ, you do the, them all the time, but for me, it's like, damn it. Yeah, I was just, I was just getting really into the. Let's just talk about this for a second. I was just getting really into the whole live show thing. You told me that you could feel that I was getting more comfortable with it and becoming more confident. And this is just taking me back all the way. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry about that. No, it's good. It's good. I need to, I need to man up. It's, it's bizarre. Yeah. Live streams are yeah. really weird. For this I, mean, I, I play with my band in the studio all the time. And you, there's not a lot of, a lot of wiggle room for fucking up. Because no. you, you throw an entire group and there's a camera crew waiting. Mm. There's three to four takes tops. The pressure, the time. pressure is huge. Yeah. The pressure is actually pretty big, but... I don't feel it at all. However, with this, it's it's insane. By the way, I saw this this question, Martin. What happened to the dark side of the moon video? Can't find it. I took it down. The reason being, I uploaded the first five minutes of it. We covered the entire dark side of the moon record. I uploaded the first five minutes, and I realized immediately what a mistake it was because the traction wasn't as big as I expected it to be. And people were asking, "Where's parts two, three, four, and five? And rightfully so. So what I'm doing right now, I'm finishing it up. I would say I'm 80% finished with it. I, it's gonna come out within the next two weeks, I hope. And then it's gonna be the whole thing in one video. And actually, it's much nicer because you're gonna be able to experience the whole album played by us live in the studio start to finish. So it's gonna be really cool. That's a way of Inara, by the way. My daughter's watching. Mwah. Hi, Inara. Hello. Um, hi, Rebecca. Um, so, any more questions, I guess, Beeps? Anything else that people are interested in? I think we've got quite a few written um, down. Yeah, let me see something that's going to not be too... We're coming to Japan, not not si we're not coming to Singapore. I was in Singapore last year. Have you, did you do Singapore? Once? I've done um, Thailand? Japan, Thailand and China. I haven't done, I haven't done yeah, I was in Singapore last year in the summer. So we're in Japan in about two and a half weeks. There's <coughs> quite a few questions of people asking about speed and legato. So <laughs> okay, of course. Okay, well let me talk about legato then. Um, I, I can do I'll speed a little bit. Yeah, very we'll briefly. do a little bit of it. Um, okay, so, some misconceptions about legato. Um, you don't need tons of power and you don't need strength in your hand to do this technique. You need efficiency of technique and you need small movements. You don't need a guitar that's got like a super low action or you know really light gauge strings. In fact, that's probably worse. It's all about having consistency of finger placement and not putting too much um, effort into the pull-offs. Uh, people tend to pull off too hard. So you don't, want to, you don't want to tie the hand out too quickly. The other thing that's really important is to um, not get stuck into the number of notes per string dictating how you feel the subdivisions. Um, so I don't want to get too bogged down in this because it takes ages, but effectively what I've done is I've disassociated myself, for, uh, my, my feeling of subdivision from the number of notes per string. So if I'm playing three notes per string, I'm trying not to accent my string changes. Um, oh, that's nice on the bottom for you. Um, so I'm not going... I'm trying to be a little bit more controlled than that. So I'm going you can't hear any notes jumping out as I'm changing string because they're all the same volume. Now, effectively, if you've... This is a bit of a, a cop-out, but it's not really. If you've got good fundamental technique, I'm sort of stealing... It's the same concept. No, 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 no. It's the same concept. If you've got good fundamental technique that's consistent, so your finger placement is consistent, everyone who's watching this can wiggle their fingers just as fast as me, if not faster. In fact, when I do this, they feel a bit sort of out of, they don't feel particularly good. They feel out of sync, they don't really, I'm not good at this. But I've learned to be consistent, so that when I actually scale this up and I get faster, first of all, I'm super relaxed and I can talk to you. Any, any guitar hour viewers have seen me do this before, where I'm kind of soloing away. Um, let's, take, let's take D Dorian Rife with you. And I'm soloing away, and I can still talk to you. So, I can tell you about the time. So that's the key to it. Remove all the tension, don't worry about note volume initially, consistency of technique, and then, you know, just go for it and try and find lines that work and avoid accenting all those string changes. That's a super summarized version because we don't have that much time. Speed. Speed. 
Okay, I'm going to talk about picking speed in particular very briefly. There is a video online of myself teaching a student about speed. Um, he's probably just looking for you. <laughs> My dog is trying to find out where I am. Uh, how to develop speed. I got a bit of backlash for it because a lot of people were telling me that I got things the wrong way because I was advising somebody to screw accuracy. And there's, I said this in a few, in a few sentences, but people were not reading, reading between the lines really. The secret to this, to speed, is to have good fundamentals. But I have a lot of students who then think they cannot move their hands faster than 160 ppm 16th notes. And the reason, more often than not, is just because they don't dare to move their hands faster. It's the same thing. Do this, do this. If you can do both at the same time, you can play fast. You have the potential to play fast. Pretty much anybody has relatively high raw speed. No, 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 I'm just with the babes, you, you do your thing. We need to hurry up right now? No, no, in slightest, it's just ignore Okay. Um, so, I lost my train of thought here. Sorry, that's fine. Um, I apologize, dude. <laughs> don't worry. So yeah, once you get good fundamentals, you can think about pushing speed. And when you push speed, you have to go beyond your current limits. You have to screw being in control. People are so obsessed with, with having control over each and every note that they can never break beyond the speed barrier. And this speed barrier has actually a neurological reason. There's something we call an open loop and a closed loop functionality of the brain. Open loop means your brain sends out a signal to your hand. You do a picking motion. The muscles send an electric signal traveling back to your brain and this is an ongoing loop of motion and feedback back to your brain. At some point two notes become too fast to, for this loop to catch up. So what the brain does, it starts chunking notes together uh, like four, three, five, six notes, depends on how fast you are. But this kind of speed wall that some people feel is they cannot allow themselves to drift into the chunking because they're so obsessed with having control over every note. When I play, when I play this, I have, of course I have control over every note, even at this speed. However, when I play, I don't have control over every note. The only thing that I'm feeling is, And then maybe we could play a tune. And yeah, if I can remember it, we're gonna play you a tune. We don't play yeah, on the at all, so or we could do that. Yeah. One of the oh, my phone's over there. Though. Oh, you? Can no, we get it? Let's do ah. Instagram. It's alright. We'll play. We'll play it. If yeah, if you want to. Yeah, yeah, I would love to. Um, what was that? So, uh, what? This might be interesting. Like what? What were the turn? What? Oh, Frederick has fun with his MM1 um, guitar. That is really nice to hear, Frederick. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you make some kick-ass music with it. That's it. How long were your technique building years? Yeah, like, that's a couple, couple of times. Yeah. I think he's posted that a few times. Not that's too long. Yeah, same here. Not too long. A couple months. Um, let's say I had fundamental technique already, but the speed came oh, in a couple see, months. See. I thought you meant from like, literally the first time you picked the guitar. Um, for me, within a year, a year and a half of playing guitar um, obsessively from the age of 15 I could play a lot of Dream Theater and Steve Vai stuff uh, about a year and a half two years max I would say not not that that means that I was a good guitar player by any stretch but the fundamental technique was about a year and a half to two years for me to be to the point where I could play <coughs> quite a lot of that stuff um, it took years and years later to, to be a, a guitar player where I felt I could improvise. And but that goes like beyond that. technique. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. It's yeah, different. Yeah. It's different. Yeah. We were, we were, I was talking about the pure ability to yeah. physically execute. Yeah. That is. It doesn't take so long. And it's kind of funny because you can hit a bit of a wall with speed because there's, there's. This is not one thousand percent proven yet, but there's a, a, a limit to your raw speed. Like some, some people will be sprinters, other people will be marathon, marathon runners by default, by default. So my, my raw speed isn't that high. I cannot play one note at 350 BPM, like some freaks can do. But 
I have a very high level of coordination, which is that the speed that I have, the relatively high speed that I have, I can apply to a lot of different lines, like all those, all those mics turn X things I do and stuff like that. So the level of coordination is higher than my, my actual raw speed, I would say. Okay, how long have we been streaming? Please? Play it some. It's yeah. not an hour yet because we haven't. We, there's not two minutes yet. Probably the time to play it. <laughs> gigs together where we were yeah. just playing no teaching we used to play I'm playing the band version of it on the tour but we're in, yeah. this is a special duo version that we we kind of prepared for some of the the retailer video shoots we got. so we need something to play that is not just wiping away over back and check so we chose that this is called an end in itself and let's see if we get through let's see if we get through it let's just check the levels first to see if you have a level no 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 if anything you're too quiet I can hear more of Martin. Yes, you can turn this. So what do you? A little bit, so I can hear it better. So we need to be playing together again. Push that button. Sorry, dude. There's cables everywhere. Oh my god! Thank <laughs> you. 
So, um, I suppose we should probably end it. Now. Yeah, that's like a decent place to end it. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Check out the guitars. It's been so much fun with you. Thank you very much. And we will see some of you in France, Italy, Spain, Spain Portugal, Portugal, Japan, Finland, Finland, uh, Norway, Sweden, Sweden uh, or Denmark. Possibly Denmark. Are we traveling all these countries in the next two weeks? Oh my god. <laughs> it's still like a month. We've got four, five days off in a month. Uh, that's not even days off. So anyway, we're not complaining. It's awesome. We love doing this. Stuff. We are coming to Japan. We are, yes. Let me see. To play the Gaki show. <coughs> Yes, I'm still tuning force. This always happens after loaded questions, just for about to finish. Yes, I'm still tuning force, for sure. Yeah, let's get a good bunch of quickies then. Sand myth. Which, which, which of both is more challenging to play rock or fusion? Both is equally challenging to play for different reasons. Absolutely. I'm a terrible rock player. Terrible rock player. Terrible I'm buying rock. a ticket. You don't need to buy a ticket. Just call the, the retailer where we're at and say that you're coming. All these events are for free. We're in Lisbon. Yes, I'm still tuning force. Yes, absolutely. Uh, sorry, Justin, we've already done over an hour. Um, Justin, you missed a great little jazz thing we did. Yeah. Uh, that's something you're interested in. Go back and watch the stream. It's there's some, some Yeah, you can watch all of this on Instagram or YouTube, on or Laney's YouTube channel or Twitch after the event. And I think we'll probably keep this up for a bit. Uh, I'm too standard and always will be. I only I use... Funny, people always ask that. that people think I'm enforced, they ask if you're enforced. And no, that doesn't usually happen. No. The, the only thing that happens every once in a while, I'll tune to a drop D, or I'll tune a seven string to a drop A, and that's about it. That's all I ever do. I'm the only weirdo. I'm the only guy that tunes strangely in here. <laughs> so, um, thanks guys. Thank you very much for watching. We appreciate it. Mwah! As I say, check out the guitars and the amps. They're in retailers near you right now. And uh, thanks to Ivan and Laney for getting us to do this. And we will see you all very soon. I have to turn off the live stream, so... Thanks, Stevie. Cool. Thanks, Stevie, for Thank being our con Instagram content manager. See you soon. <laughs> See you guys.